there. Welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. This is Marcia. Today we are practicing our calligraphy hand lettering and we're also going to talk about my new podcast debut which starts on tomorrow and then I have a podcast episode one trailer that you can listen to on my website marketsofsunshine.com so I hope you will start uh, tuning into that every Friday, and I'm going to be sharing with you all about how to unlock your creativity by being out in sunshine. So my challenge is daily sunshine challenge, and I'm going to go over that with you as soon as we finish the calligraphy practice today. So my uh, mindful lettering today is going to be this quote, I know I will make it through this. I thought that was appropriate. We're all definitely going through something together for the first time in over a hundred years. So I thought this quote was absolutely perfect. So in order to keep my tracing paper in place, I'm going to use a piece of washi tape. So let me get the washi tape out and I will put a piece just right here on the side. I always put everything in its place and I was getting everything out and I just forgot about the little washi tape trick. So just come over here, put it in the corner and you don't need a lot. Just one is all you need just to hold it into place. All right, so I'm using my Stampin' Up! markers. <clears throat> I show you this each time, but if you're new to my channel, welcome. So this is what they look like, this whole nice pack. And they're called Stampin' Right. And I'm not a demonstrator with Stamping Up, so you can find your own demonstrator and support one of your, uh, somebody locally. You can just find a demonstrator and then look in your area. You type in your town name and then you can put a smile on their face if you would like to order these markers from them. Um, so I don't order from anybody locally in my area because I used to be a demonstrator and I bought everything that I wanted. And I've been have I've used these markers now. I've had them for over five years and they're still going strong. So I'm happy with them. Very, very nice. So let's get started. The two colors I'm going to use today, this one is an orange. It's called pumpkin pie. Orange and green are my two favorite colors together. And then this was old olive. So I thought those looked really pretty together. So let's get started. So when you're doing your hand lettering, the one thing you want to remember is just to relax. This is not a race. This is just relaxing time. And this I really would really encourage you, no matter if you're into junk journaling, scrapbooking, whatever it is, if you can incorporate the hand lettering into your, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, list of talents, then you will really you will really see a difference. Um, in addition to your daily sunshine, <laughs> when you stop and you sit down, you know, you're not having to put all these supplies together and, you know, grabbing your ink and your glue bottle and your scissors and your this, that, and the other bits of paper and fabric and what have you. It's just one little thing, a marker and paper. That's it. And then your little mind, you can just relax your mind and it's just amazing that that process of paying attention to what you're doing right at the moment, it does. It helps to push everything else out of the mind. And if you can sit like I'm doing in front of a window where nature, you can see nature, trees, flowers, grass, animals, then you've got a bonus of relaxation and you're going to lower your stress levels. So that's why I do this. I got into calligraphy years and years ago, and I told you I was going to buy one of those chiseled um, markers, and I forgot about that. So I will do that and get that off of Amazon. 
and I do have an Amazon affiliate list of products below that you can purchase from me if you'd like to support my channel in that way. But there's also a whole other, uh, many other ways that you can do it um, in the description box below. So when you're, let's get to the hand lettering. When we're going up, it's a very light stroke. When you're going down, that's when you put the pressure and you want it to be uh, a fat stroke. So um, thin, thick, whatever, you know. All right, so let's say thick. Let's not say fat. All right, so, so I want it to be a thin stroke going up. Now here we're going to go down, so I'm going to push down. And then as I curve, I'm going to let up on the pressure and curve it around. So the same thing here. I'm going to start here. Now the pressure. And you can lift your marker. It's okay. It doesn't all have to be, you know, like when you're writing in cursive, you know, you can do it without lifting your pen. Well, it's not that way with this. Lifting the pen is perfectly okay. So if you are enjoying my channel, then please hit that subscribe button. And when we reach 600 subscribers, we're going to be doing another giveaway. And it's going to be lots of goodies. I always give such wonderful things. So if you've won any of my giveaways, leave a comment below and let everyone know just how much you enjoy and appreciate my generosity. Now, the reason why I also bought this workbook is because your practicing it helps the brain to learn it. So if you take a course and you don't have something to practice on like this where you're tracing it and you're just looking at it and then you're trying to do it. Now, if you're an artist by nature, that was your gift. Um, you know, you can look at something and you can draw it, then hallelujah, you should be thankful. <laughs> but my little brain works a little bit differently, and I need to trace it and practice it first when it comes to the hand lettering. And so the workbook was the perfect little tool that I was able to use in order to get that. So when I'm doing this, and when I lift it up, you'll be able to see the difference and when I then when I do it on my own just with you know eyeing it myself you'll see that it looks exactly the same because this is where even though I'm talking to you you know the brain can do lots of things at the same time that's the one thing it does the brain automatically multitasks and we don't have any control over that isn't that beautiful wasn't that wonderful we were very intelligently designed and created. But humans, when we try to multitask, it doesn't come out very good. <laughs> All right, so let me lift it up. There you can see it. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now I'm going to lift off the little washi. Put my cap back on. Peel off this piece. Going to slide it up. Okay. Well, usually what I do, I do it this way. I don't know why I did that. I forget. I forget my process. Right, I want to line it up as much as I can because otherwise it's going to be blurry and make me dizzy. Okay. Now I leave it there like that, and then I trace it again. But I just look at myself. All right. So light, heavy, light, so we're going to come here, light, curve, heavy, light, loop here, 
heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy, light, her, heavy, Doesn't that look nice? I oh, kind of looked like an E there. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gotta keep working. Gotta, gotta close the O up. <laughs> oh. See, you can have fun with this. You can make your. You can laugh at yourself. It's okay. It's perfectly okay. Don't get mad. Laugh. Have a good time. Because everything is. Fixable. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Now let me show you a little trick that I've done. And let's see if I can do it good. So now I use two colors to give it that three-dimensional look, very retro look. So you can do it on the outside or you can do it on the inside. I find that it's easier if I do it on the outside. And I'm just going to come right here beside it. And I'm just going to trace my strokes. Just to give it that fun look. Isn't that pretty? And again, it just teaches you how to be mindful. This is exactly what this is doing. It's teaching you to be mindful. So this one here, I went on the top. This one here, I went on the bottom. Oh, well. In Marsha's world, you never know. See, you say one thing, but the brain says, oh, I like it this way. You want to do it that way, but I think it looks better this way. I was like, okay, whatever. Just have fun with it. That's that's my whole 
point with this. We just have fun. And it's something different. You know what I'm saying? It's different. It's different from all the junk journaling that we do. It's just different. It's just wonderful. And when you can learn to even pick it up a little bit, and when I get that chisel marker, you're going to just love it. And that's where a lot of you might just jump right on board with this. And then with you're doing your journals, you can come in with beautiful hand lettering or when you're going to send a card off in the mail, then you can use this beautiful hand lettering technique. And with that chisel, it makes it so easy. You don't even have to learn any of this other than just, you know, you want to be artistic. You want to be, you want to make it pretty, obviously. But the chisel marker is a game changer. It will like just completely, it can make anybody a calligraphy writer immediately. So I'm going to get those and I'm going to show you how to use those. So the next video, I promise we will do that. So now let's talk about the daily sunshine challenge that's going to be coming up uh, Friday tomorrow kicks it off. So whatever day you're watching this, if it's not on a, if it's today's Thursday, um, August 12th, but whatever day you wind up watching this, every Friday you can join in on my podcast and we're going to be talking about the Daily Sunshine Challenge. And I'm just going to give you a little recap and then we're going to jump into our echo printing and um, echo dying and I'm going to talk about the do's and the don'ts of that. So I told you in yesterday's video that's what we were going to do today. So the Daily Sunshine Challenge has already started over on my Instagram. So if you are a follower on my Instagram, then you know already uh, what's going on and you've been participating. So thank you to Annette and the different friends who are already participating in the Daily Sunshine Challenge. And this is not any pressure. And just because I says, you know, the title is Daily Sunshine, maybe you're somebody who's like me, who's a homebody, doesn't work outside the home, and temperatures and weather affect you. So you may not be able to get outside every day, but you know what? There's a window in your house and there's a door in your house Usually everybody has a sliding door, French doors, but windows. Everybody has windows. And you can look out at the sunshine. That can be your daily sunshine, even if you have to stand in front of a window to get the sunshine. And more than likely, there is a window in your house that gets the direct sun, right? So if it's on the west side of the house or the east side of the house, Windows are generally on every side of your house. And as far as I know, houses are still square and rectangular in shape. So everybody has a window. So, um, and if you heard, if you've listened to the trailer of my podcast, we're going to coin a little phrase together, okay? We are no longer going to say, I can't, okay? Take that out of your vocabulary. And we're going to say, I I'll try. I will try. Don't say I can't. We're not talking, I'm not talking life and death things here. Like I'm not going to say to you or somebody says to me, Marcia, go ahead and eat that that you know you're allergic to. I'm going to say, no way, Jose, I can't. I'll have an allergic reaction and I don't want to go down that road. That's not where we're talking here. So I just want to get that understood. <laughs> So, and of course, if you have a medical condition that has been diagnosed by a doctor or you know yourself that for some reason you can't take the sun directly, then go in the shade, okay? Sun is vital for living, right? Isn't that why the sun is in the sky? It helps the birds. It helps the plants. It wasn't created for nothing. It was created for something. And even though we're imperfect, even though we have health problems, we still benefit from the sun. Now, I'm going to go over all that in tomorrow's episode, so I hope you will tune in. But the hashtag for you to participate in the Daily Sunshine Challenge, 
whatever day you want to have, you know, participate, whatever day you remember. Oh, let me do my, I'm out here on a walk. I'm in my garden. I'm looking out my window. Click, take the picture, take a little video, and then post it on your social media with the hashtag daily sunshine challenge and the little sun emoji. Okay, that's, that's the whole thing. Daily sunshine challenge, little sun emoji at the end, and the hashtag is at the front. Okay, so that's how I will find you. Do it on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, you could do it on Facebook. You could do it on Twitter. And but I'm on I'm doing it on Instagram, so you can always follow me on Instagram. My link's in the description below. So when you just use that hashtag, that tags me, I know right away. Come to my posts when you see the daily sunshine posts on my uh feed, then you can comment on that. And I will come over and look at yours as well and comment on yours. So it's a lot of fun and it's very therapeutic. It's, it's going to be a real big, big, big health benefit. It lowers your stress. And again, like I said, I'll go over all that. So now let's jump into the next topic for this video. Lots of things going on in this video. So this is more like a vlog. <laughs> Calligraphy vlog with Markets of Sunshine with Marcia. Now let's go over the difference between echo printing and echo dyeing. Now, echo printing is where you take uh, fabric or watercolor paper that's been treated with a fixative so that your dyes and your prints will stay. You see how this looks so pretty? And I did this over a month ago. What is today? The 12th, three weeks ago. Okay, close to a month. And look at that, how beautiful it is. And some of these, I've even rinsed them and it doesn't come off. It stayed on it. I was so surprised. Okay, so now what is a fixative? A mordant. Okay, so a mordant, which is another, it's just a fancy word. It's, I mean, it's in the dictionary, but I mean, it's based, let's, let's, let's make something simple so that we understand it, you know. Um, it's a fixative. Everybody knows what a fixative is. It's kind of like, you know, denture cream is a fixative. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd just, you know, okay, just to make it so everybody understands, what is a fixative? Because there's really not much other than, okay, glue, glue is a fixative, but that's a permanent fixative. Um, now, I don't know, I, you know, I have to look that up. Is glue considered a mordant? Hmm. Okay, no, I think it applies only to this kind of a thing. So, this has been... First of all, put in a fixative mordant bath, and what you need is a liquid or something that will be like al alum. I think it's alum. Yeah, not alum. Alum is a fixative, a mordant, but it's a little bit. Even though they say you can use it in baking, so but they want you to do it outdoors. So anything when they tell you to do it outdoors is a real red flag with me right away of saying, uh, no, 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 don't do that in your home. Okay, especially if you have asthma and allergies, which I do. So I ordered, which we're going to do videos on this too. So coming up, it's going to be a whole new series. And we're going to be eco dyeing, natural dyeing together. And we're going to be doing eco printing together. So my little burner... I ordered a little single burner from Walmart with the coils because the other ones that had just the flat ceramic surface got really bad reviews as far as the temperature holding and there was a terrible odor. And that's what I look for right away. I'm always on the lookout for, okay, does this thing have an odor? <laughs> Is it going to have fumes? So I have to take it, I have to be looking at that. And when that was like the first thing that somebody said was like, oh my word, I thought I was going to die. And I said, okay, that's that one off the list. And the old fashioned coils, you know, those things don't have an odor. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Just, it's safe. So we got to get that. And then I also opted to not get the double burner. And I'll tell you the reason why I did that. Because I have a big enamel pot that you would normally use for canning when you're going to make jams and you're canning your vegetables and all that kind of thing. I used to do that. 
And so um, I still have that big enamel pot, but that thing is old. I know I had that at least 15 years. I might have even purchased it way before even then. And it was in the garage being stored, and my husband had put a bunch of nails in it. So I don't know. And I rinsed it out. We, you know, cleaned it. And then I used it, and it had an odor. And I said, that's strong. I mean, it wasn't a bad odor. I don't mean like that. But I mean, it was like a enamel -y odor. So the coating wasn't coming off. Everything was fine. So anyway, but I'm, I'm using that because it's not, it's not hurting anything. And then I have a stainless steel pot. So then I said, well, you know what? I don't want to use that enamel one anymore. So I, it's outside just to store stuff. And I'm going to have a whole little setup now outside. And the cord is very short on these burners. That was another complaint. But um, so as long as you're right there by the outlet. So I have an outlet outside on my patio. My, my husband just found this beautiful table that's all metal. Somebody was throwing it away. And... Um, with slate tiles on the top. So I'll show you that once I, once I do the video, the first video. And so that's going to be my whole little setup right next to the outlet. The nice, it's like a coffee table size, so it's big. And the burner's going to go there, my stainless steel pot. I have a glass lid for that and everything else. So I'm going to show you how to do the eco printing. We're going to do that. There's two methods. So the eco printing and the boiling water pot is on paper. The eco printing on fabric is pounding with a hammer. So I'm going to show you how to do all that So in that video, so stay tuned. Now if it comes early enough, which is probably, I'll probably film it on over the weekend and um, 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 um for no, so next Thursday more than likely will be that first series that we will start with all of the echo printing and echo dye. So stay tuned for all of that. So right now though, in my Etsy shop, I have a embellishment kit that has all of these elements in it. And I just did, this is on cotton fabric. I just did one on silk because silk is also a very good um, fabric to use. That one got high, high reviews on the longevity of the print to last and so I prepared it in the fixative which is all natural organic because you know me if you know me at all if you've been paying attention I am an organic lifestyle gal so there is nothing that passes these lips <laughs> that is not organic <laughs> or goes on my skin that is not organic okay so I shower my hair my body personal products my, you know, washing the hands is organic. I use seventh generation free and clear uh, dish soap. I use, um, what's the other one? Arm and Hammer free and clear laundry soap. That's the only one that doesn't bother me. And um, I, I drink purified reverse osmosis water. We have a unit under the sink, makes our, makes our you know, own. And we, I drink um, electric light, natural electrolyte water. That's the company my husband happened to find at Whole Foods. And so everything is pure or organic. In my home, I don't use any caustic cleaning tools. Everything that I use, I use Shackley products to clean with. It's Basic G for germicide, Basic H for household, and um, alcohol, white vinegar, Bon Ami, those are my basic cleaning supplies and things that I use. Okay, I just want to get that out. And if and the, even this the craft supplies and things like that that I use, um, they have to be non-toxic. They have to be water-based. They have to be like low odor to get my seal of approval. So if it's, if Marsha can use it, it's a safe thing for for most people to be able to use. There are people who are even more sensitive than me, believe it or not. And so now, moving on. Now, here's the watercolor paper. This is watercolor paper. And I'll show you that pad in a moment. And I bought that on Amazon. I'll put that in, will be one of my affiliate links in the description below. And so that um, is a great paper because it's very forgiving. So like if you were to put regular paper in, it, it does work. You know, cardstock will work as well. But this is a nice texture. I mean, you know, 
it's just it just gives it a nice it has a nice look to it it has a nice texture and you can actually get watercolor paper that's even more pronounced like embossed looking um, heavier texture but I didn't I didn't want to go that route and this was a very inexpensive um, pad that I bought as well and you got a lot of pa paper in it so so this is what I did so first of all I tea dyed this and then I came back with an organic beet red beet organic from Whole Foods and I boiled it and I sliced it and then I took the slice and I printed with it so can you see that right there so this is beet and tea dyed and there's two different color I used the um, I don't know what yellow beet I guess it's considered a yellow golden golden beet and then the red beet so this is the golden beet here and then this is the red beet here isn't that pretty that is so pretty so you'll get one of these if you purchase my uh, August embellishments kit in my Etsy shop so I will have a variety of these in there and I'm going to do coffee dyeing also and these have been tea dyed now tea has I think it's tannis and that is the natural fixative in tea coffee does not have it so you have to tea dye things first and then coffee dye them if you want the, the stain to, the, to stay and not to fade. Oh, this one was all, okay, so I tea dyed it first, but then this one I came back and I just went with that red beet all over that. Isn't that pretty? Just gorgeous. I just love it. So I didn't do it on both sides. Yeah. But that's okay because, you know, then you can, I didn't want to, you know, if you want to write on this, right on one side then I wanted to, to leave it like that so that you could do that so these are so pretty I just love this so 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 nice now I did use a mask when I did the eco printing uh, because even if it's an edible flower because I tried to use all edible flowers I said you know I'm not going to use a plant that's not edible and they smell they stink when you start to pound them <laughs> and you know why that happens if you do any research, that was a natural defense that God put in plants so that when insects and little birdies came over to try to chomp on them, they don't like the taste, and so they leave them alone. Isn't that smart? Yes. So it's their natural defense that's built in, that was programmed in, that Jehovah created, put in there. And so I wear a mask, and I... I do it in my house but um, I have to wear my mask so daisies of all things I mean daisies were a strong smell roses roses okay now roses were safe because you know roses smell like roses so that was a, that was a nice smell but um, yeah that was an interesting thing so and then I tried it with um, eco printing with an iron that didn't work very good it did come on there, but it was so, I mean, I knew it was there because I just did it. So that was different, you know, but if I wouldn't have done it, I, you know, if I, then you wouldn't be able to see it. If I just showed you this piece of fabric and you looked at it, you would be like, what am I looking at? You know, so, but let me get some of the things that I've done today and I'll show you. Okay. So this is one of the mums. Actually, this is a mum. Isn't that pretty? This turned out gorgeous. That's beautiful. And now these are pansies. Now look at the difference between the pansy and the mum. Beautiful. Aren't those beautiful? Okay, now the next grouping are these are been in a tea bath and I, I doubled, double did them. <laughs> so I really wanted to make sure. And then these were um, the mums as well. So the edible things, it, even on the, you know, even having the fixative in there, I mean, I love this. Look at the difference. So this has just been lightly tea dyed same fabric, 
lightly tea dyed. You see the see the difference? Look at that. Just love this. Absolutely love it. So you'll get one of these in your August kit as well if you purchase that. And so I still I'm going to rinse these all again and get all the little dried pieces off of there. And I'm going to take a a paintbrush or something and go to the to the you know sink and just brush all that off of there. So when you pound it, one side will have all the residue and then the print will come through on the other side. So it's really pretty. It's a it's just fabulous. I just love this. It's like being in a in a chemistry lab, you know. Absolutely love it. And now I did some more this morning on silk. Let me show you the silk. So this is cotton fabric. Now let me show you silk. Okay, so these are the silk. They've been tea dyed and I used a stronger um, solution of the tea. You have to start thinking of all these terms now that you're using because it's like, truly, you're, it's like you're in a chemistry lab. I mean, honestly, you know. So, so this was the side. This is the chrysanthemum. These are the mums. Look at that beautiful. So look at how it put that purple edge on those. Oh, just gorgeous. But the flower was like a burgundy. It was not a light purple like this. It was a burgundy. This was a yellow. Look at how beautiful these are. Absolutely gorgeous. And look at this now. It just blended it all over the whole. Oh, I just love this. Gorgeous. I'm in love with this. It's just absolutely fabulous. Okay, now look at here. Can you see that little bit of green and yellow? This was a green and yellow, and that green did show up. It's absolutely gorgeous. And isn't that wonderful? It's the What's so fascinating is the side that you pound it on is uh it's it, it did not doesn't give you the print it's the other side when you flip it over that you see the imprint i only did this corner here isn't that beautiful just beautiful so this is all tea dyed but it, i haven't done any of the printing on there yet so i want to get some roses and i'm going to do that so these are going to be additions to the kit or it will be the silk flower pieces and these measure about six inches by four inches, yeah, more or less. So this one here, I'm gonna cut it six inches and then six inches, and then there'll probably be a little piece left over that I'll probably just keep. So, but this is just wonderful. So when you're going to do any of the eco dyeing, eco printing, make sure, please be safe, Protect your little lungs, protect those around you, wear goggles, a mask, and gloves, an apron. You gotta have, you're gonna have full gear, and use edible flowers, okay? And I'm gonna show you all the tools, but I hope you'll support me and purchase one of my August kits, and so that you can have one of these beautiful um, tea dyed, flower printed embellishments to put in one of your journals or on a card. Aren't these just beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. I mean, I just love how they turned out. I just love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so in Monday's video is when we'll see each other again. It will be all about organizing. Tomorrow is the podcast, so please, I hope you will t tune in for that. It will be over on my blog, marketsofsunshine.com. You can listen to me on Spotify, I believe is what it is. And, and eventually, because I have to be, um, it takes time for it to get... Um, listed on Google Play and Apple Play. So they actually have a whole process you have to go through. So, but I am on Spotify and you can listen to me on my blog. You don't have to download anything. And um, so that will be there at noon, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday. So thank you for being here with me today. Keep creating in the sunshine. Be safe. Bye-bye.